I'm Brandon Armand. Welcome to The Blueprint. As you know, on this show, I interview entrepreneurs and community leaders about the challenges they've encountered, how they've overcome those challenges, and their blueprint for success. In this episode, I'm doing that very thing with Dr. Joseph Lena Ford, a small business owner who successfully reopened her business during the coronavirus pandemic. But this is a special edition of The Blueprint because the conversation between Dr. Joseph Ford and I comes from an alumni seminar for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. Dr. Joseph Ford and I are graduates of this prestigious program for small business owners. If you're interested in learning more about the program, I encourage you to go online to 10ksbapply.com. Meanwhile, watch or listen to my interview with Dr. Joseph Lana Ford about reopening your business during COVID-19, presented by Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses. You're listening to The Blueprint with respected entrepreneur and journalist Brandon Armand. He's talking with other entrepreneurs, professionals, and community leaders about the hurdles they've encountered in their careers, the lessons they've learned, and their blueprint for success. And now, here's your host, Brandon Armand. Thank you so much for um, the opportunity and allowing me to be on this resource call with Dr. Ford um, and have the opportunity to be on with everyone else uh, and just share um, some of the um, things that we have learned in reopening business, our businesses after this pandemic. This is something that no one thought that we would go through. Um, and no one ever imagined. And so because of that, we never imagined what we would have to do to reopen our business in the midst of a pandemic. But as you'll see during this call, Dr. Ford has been able to do that and she's done it successfully. So this will give us an opportunity to hear from her, learn more about her business, but then also um, learn uh, and pick her brain a little bit to see how she was able um, to, to do what she what she's doing currently. So with that being said, um, Sheila introduced Dr. Ford a little bit, but I wanna give you a little bit more background about her. So she's the founder and CEO of Joseph Ford Enterprises and High Level Speech and Hearing Center. Dr. Lena Joseph Ford is an entrepreneur in the healthcare industry. She, has, she served as an advocate for musicians' health throughout New Orleans. Amongst her most notable clients are world-renowned music artist Drake, and music groups, uh, Tank and the Bangers. Now, if you know anything about music, you know Drake is one of the biggest artists around the country, and Tank and the Bangers, who are from New Orleans, one of the hottest groups um, in the country right now. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. As a young girl, Dr. Joseph Ford suffered with hearing difficulties and was bullied because of her speech impediment. Now she uses her resilience to help others by offering early intervention strategies for individuals with communication disorders. As a philanthropist, Dr. Joseph Ford has played a significant role in supporting youth and underserved communities. As an advocate for economic development, she founded Joseph Ford Enterprises, a global economic development firm that invests in real estate, small businesses, health, and technology. Dr. Joseph Ford has been featured in Forbes, Gambit 40 Under 40, Neutral Grounds, and Biz New Orleans Magazine. Currently, Dr. Joseph Ford has a new segment called Healthy Habits with Dr. J, which airs on WWL TV's Great Day Louisiana every Friday at 9 a.m. And if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out in New Orleans on WWL TV every Friday at 9 a.m. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce and let her speak a little bit. Dr. Lana Joseph Ford, thank you for uh, coming on and talking with us, Dr. Ford. Absolutely, and it's truly a pleasure to be able to sit on this end of the table after having been on the opposite end of the table. Um, and so this is really exciting. I'm excited to be here. That's great. So tell us um, a little bit about you. Let's Before we get started um, talking about how you reopened your business um, during COVID-19, how did you get started with your business? Tell us a little bit about that. So um, my inspiration or passion for starting High Level Speech and Hearing Center, it stemmed from me as a child suffering with speech issues. And unfortunately for me, instead of um, being able to deal with that, they say early intervention is key. 
instead of being able to deal with it in my early stages, unfortunately, it took eight years before I actually received any type of intervention for speech therapy. As a result, uh, honestly, I was bullied. I was teased. Um, I went through a little bit of low self-esteem issues and things like that um, as a child. So um, that really, you know, that's something that you remember growing up. And uh, finally, interestingly enough, my mom was able to advocate on my behalf. And we were able to get the speech therapist at my middle school to finally take me in. The school provided me with speech services. And the most interesting thing about it and which what really drove me to pursue um, speech and hearing was that it only took me three months before I was completely healed of that speech disorder. Now, let's put that into perspective, right? Eight years of my life, I'm waiting, just waiting to see a speech therapist, being um, bullied, being teased, having to endure all of those things that we really don't want our kids to have to endure because it does leave a mark and it's, it's painful. And only three months after receiving therapy, it was gone. The problem was solved. So um, we don't, I don't want other kids to have to deal with that. So that's what drove me to start High Level Speech and Hearing Center. And honestly, Brandon, we've been doing it ever since for the past four years. Uh, that's an awesome story. And, you know, uh, listening to you tell your story, it actually just reminded me of uh, our training in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program as alums. You know, we've gone through um, the training. And one of the things that they taught us was the why. Um, having a why of why we do what it is we do. Yeah. Um, and that helps people to buy into our business um, as well. And I think you, you, you did a great job of explaining that. Um, but then taking that struggle that you went through as a kid um, and then being passionate about making sure that other people don't have to go through that. And that passion, mm -hmm. I'm sure, continues to drive you in your business as you continue to move forward. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that passion is what kept you going during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic when, you know, all of us as business owners had to sit back and say, whoa, what's going on? We have, we, we don't know the future. You know, I, I'm a very optimistic person. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm very optimistic. Um, but for the first time, probably, when this pandemic hit, I actually fell into a, a slight state of depression. Um, because, you know, I'm watching the news and I'm like, okay, how am I going to pay my employees and how am I going to survive and pay myself? And, and although I'm very optimistic, it was trying to plan for the unknown. Um, and that was hard. And, and it, it got to the point where I had to actually just stop watching the news and go take a run. And I'm a Christian. So I went and prayed and talked to God and kind of got back and got myself back together. Um, and then started planning to figure out how to reopen my business and change some things around. Tell us about you and when this pandemic hit, um, and especially with your profession, what went through your mind when you realized you had to close your doors and you couldn't get patients to come in anymore? Well, Brandon, I have to agree with you. Um, I'm also an optimistic person. And the first time that I ever, um, in my experience, I told you guys I've only been open for four years, so it's a fairly new company, just been very successful. But, um, but still new. So that was the first time within my four years that I actually had a serious issue that was out of my control. I couldn't control that. And there was absolutely nothing that we could do to change what the governor had ordered. Um, so yes, you talk about depression. Heck yeah, I suffered with that too. That was the first time in my life that I ever felt like I don't know if this is really going to work. I don't know if this is really um gonna be i don't i don't know what we're gonna look like when we come out of it or even if we'll end up coming out of it you know my business model is you come into the office we see you i'm a doctor we see you face to face provide the hearing test provide the speech assessment and then we schedule you to come back to us um uh, a couple months later or a year later depending on what the recommendation from the provider is also with our school services, same thing. We go into the schools and 90% of the services we provide were in the schools and we weren't done. We still had a lot of students to still see. And my initial thought was, oh my God, you know, what are we going to actually do about this? We haven't seen everybody. Secondly, my other thought was, um, of course, my employees were first. I always think about my employees. But secondly, my patients, here's the bigger picture. 
because I can just provide uh, money to my employees, right? I could pay them. They'll be fine whether they work or not. Uh, we could have dipped into our savings. We had a, a pretty good savings account, so we can dip in there and pay them. But what about the 25,000 kids in New Orleans who depend on us to provide speech and hearing services to them? Now, if the schools close and we try to get the schools to say, okay, let's, let's try to do something about this, work with us. But that was, I'll be honest, that was a challenge, um, a challenge that we had to end up adapting the lean business model to resolve. Um, so there were 25,000 kids that usually would receive our services that no longer were going to be able to get access to those services. So that is the exact opposite of why I started High Level Speech and Hearing Center. So yes, depression, heck yeah, I faced that too. I, I didn't know what in the world we were going to do. I didn't know. My employees didn't know, but they trusted me. And we were able to overcome all of that fairly quickly. And I'm sorry, it took me uh, a while to, to get back. I'm uh, trying to mute myself so that we don't have feedback while also trying to unmute you. So I'm doing a couple of things at, at one time. So I apologize for that. Um, can, can you guys still see me well? Yes. All right, perfect. Um, so with that being said, um, you, uh, you decided, okay, you have, to, you have to make a change. You have to figure this out and you have to come back. I had to do the exact same thing. I mean, right now you see I'm at my house, right? Um, we have a studio in, in New Orleans, East, my company, um, for our podcasts and our shows that we produce. Um, but I had to make a makeshift studio. I had to kind of figure things out and, and turn things around. Now, listen, is this as, as nice looking as, as my studio in New Orleans, East? Of course it's not. So, But uh, we still have to make sure that we get the job done. What is it that you did to, um, to make that change and, and get your business back up and running? So... I started my business based off of one thing, and that is called the lean business model. Um, I was taught about the lean business model in a um, social entrepreneur incubator I participated in with Propeller. And um, I will tell you, it was the start of my business, and it's the only way we were able to adjust through COVID-19. Lean business model suggests this. If you have a business, you don't put everything into place all at one time. What you do is you start off lean, like weight loss, right? Um, you're going to trim the fat. And that's exactly what we did to start the business. We trimmed the fat. So just like with the lean business model, we're looking at, um, with that model in the business, what we're looking at is where do we really need to make adjustments? How can we make things more efficient? How can we increase our productivity and profitability while making things more efficient without seeing people in person? Now, to any typical doctor, they would think, oh, hell no, nah, that, that's not even possible, right? But um, because of technology and automation, we have the ability to make all of these adjustments and to make things um, happen that, you know, back, back then, and I mean four years ago, not back in the day, we couldn't do all of that. So what we did, we said, okay, well, virtual visits had always been a thing. It's not something that was, wasn't heard of. It's just something that we, it was a service that we could provide that we had not tapped into. So we said, well, this is a perfect opportunity for us to expand our reach through virtual visits. And we did, we started our virtual visits. Um, so we converted all of our in-person our in visits, our in-person appointments, um, into virtual appointments and were able to provide the patients with the services within the safety of their own homes. Now, needless to say, we had to shut down the company for one week because we had to train everybody on this completely brand new process. Like we had never done this before. And we had talked about it like last year, um, Jamal Ford is my husband and he's our director. And, and he had been telling everybody, all of our ET members, he was like, man, we need to do this, you know, but we kept pushing it back because the in-person um, appointments were working for us. So we changed that. We did virtual and it was a huge adjustment, but I will tell you, our patients loved it. Our providers were happy. Um, our employees were happy because they were able to be at home during a difficult time. Um, the fact that the schools were out, the parents were very happy because they were able to give their kids the services without having to come outside of their homes um, in order to get it. 
um, and they were still getting some type of enrichment because the schools closed. I think um, March 11th, I think was the last day for most of the schools. Um, so we were able to provide a service that pretty much leaned due to the lean business model into what was current and what was needed at the time. So how did, let's talk about Goldman Sachs for a second mm -hmm. um, and your participation in the program. How did the Goldman Sachs program help you um, in, when, when you had to go through this and make this transition? What skills did you learn from the Goldman Sachs program that helped you with this? I will tell you, number one, I learned how to put together a team, an effective leading um, executive team. I um, initially, before I started Goldman Sachs, everybody was just all over the place. So we had an org chart that I wasn't really paying attention to that org chart, I'll be honest. Um, it was just something that was there <laughs> and it looked good. <laughs> And it made me feel like I was more organized, but I did not effectively utilize that org chart to the way that I should have. And um, COVID-19, um, prior to that, um, I mean, uh, Goldman Sachs, I'll say, um, actually forced me to utilize that chart and I formed that executive team. So when COVID-19 happened, I was able to put all of our executive members together and we were able to strategize without any type of interference from all other employees. Because let's be honest, you have your higher level employees, you have your lower level employees, and sometimes lower level don't always understand strategic planning. And strategic planning is key to all of this. Um, so we were able to put that together. That's number one. Number two, Goldman Sachs told me to focus on KPIs. And I had not before, I, we had a KPI, I knew what it was, um, but I was not utilizing it strategically. I wasn't. <laughs> And before you go on, for anyone who may not be familiar, what is KPI? Mm -hmm. KPIs are key performance indicators. That's your measurement tool. Um, my thing that I tell everybody is numbers don't lie. A lot of times we make decisions based off of emotions, but numbers have no emotion. It's either true or false. And that's what I believe in. And the numbers didn't lie. They were showing me exactly where we should lean with the lean business model, where the demand was, what the customers wanted. Um, how many, what was our completion rate? And um, I had the KPIs, I had the chart, but I didn't have it so specific to where I was really able to navigate my business. Because of KPIs, I always know what's going on in the company. And because we've automated our KPIs, and that's something that I don't hear a lot of um, small business owners talk about is automation. Um, Jamal is really big, like I said before, he's really big on um on the, the teletherapy is the reason he's the reason we got into it, but he's big on automation. He's our director. He's big on automation. So his suggestion was, all right, well, let's figure out a way how we automate KPIs so employees can't lie about it. Let's figure out how we can automate it. So it's one more thing off of our plate. And we did. I'll drop a gym. We use JotForm. That's how we automated it. We use JotForm and Microsoft Excel. And now through JotForm, everyone's entering their information and Microsoft Excel automatically takes that information and puts it where we need it. And it interprets it in a way that'll be consistent with our strategic plan. Y'all, Dr. Joseph Ford is dropping some gems. So um, <laughs> you're joining us on the call. Start getting your questions ready. In a little bit, you're gonna have an opportunity to raise your hand. Um, in the Zoom call and, and ask Dr. F Joseph Ford a question. So start getting your questions ready. And if you're not taking notes, I advise you to start taking notes because um, she's dropping some gems. I, I, I can't take notes, so I'm going to go back and, and listen to, to this recording. Um, so you're, you're, you're in the midst of COVID-19. You're thinking about all the things that you've learned from Goldman Sachs um, and, and just from your, your time in business. What did you do to get your business open? I know you told me that there that you were able to um, your competition, some of your competition, your competitors yeah. still have not opened. What yep. made you different compared to to them? So sadly, um, I want to say I counted about fifteen audiology practices across the U.S. that actually closed their doors for good. Audiologists were scrambling all over the place and saying, you know what, I can't do it. We can't even sell hearing aids because their bread and butter, unfortunately, was primarily the sale of hearing aids, which is a huge stigma in our industry. I hate it. I don't understand it. That's why I guess I'm the uh, black sheep um, in the industry. 
<laughs> but because um, it, it doesn't, they don't take the lean business model in mind, but hopefully I'll get an opportunity to talk to them about that one day. But um, yes, they closed. Um, our competition, all of our competition closed. All of them that were here in Louisiana closed. Um, and they closed for a while. They closed for like at least a month or two. And some of them still have not resumed in-person appointments. So this is where I got my managers together and said, look, you guys, where some people see tragedy, remember this, uh, entrepreneurs, where some people see tragedy, other people should see opportunity. As entrepreneurs, we should see opportunity in the midst of tragedy. They, there's a rumor out there that says that when um, Hurricane Katrina happened, that, that people like Donald Trump and Oprah Winfrey flew over New Orleans looking for properties. They're like, we were all scrambling away. I know I moved out to Belrose, Louisiana, the country, sugarcane fields and bayous. Um, other people left, went to Texas. We were all scattering away like roaches. And they were all coming over here. They were coming over here looking, just scouting out our homes, our areas, you know? We have to get into the mindset of seeing opportunity. I cannot stress that enough to entrepreneurs. That's where we mess up. But yet with COVID, a lot of entrepreneurs got scared. They closed their doors and that's what we saw. We stayed open and we were able to pull in patients from Ashna, pull in patients from Children's Hospital, Pull in patients from the schools because again, all of the schools were closed. So we, we started and we realized with these virtual services, what, when you go virtual, what's your, what's your limitation? Very little, it's very little. Whereas before we were restricted by location and transportation, now all of a sudden that wasn't a factor anymore. Also all of a sudden, everybody was at home. We saw opportunity there. How can they no-show to their appointment? They ain't got nothing else to do. They're at home. <laughs> They're at home chilling by the phone, you know? So it was perfect for us. It was perfect. Um, so we, we saw that as an opportunity. All right, y'all, let's increase our volume. Let's schedule more appointments. Let's reach out to Lafayette, something we had never done before. Let's reach out to Monroe and Streetport, something we had never done before. We wanted to even reach out to out of state, but because of regulations with our scope of practice and our licensure, we weren't able to do that. We even partnered with the company, y'all. We started reaching out globally. So we're talking about global expansion right now. And guess what? Everybody else closed. So when it's time for us to reach out to vendors, they're not having nobody call their phone. You know, we're calling their phone. They're spending time with us. So now when everyone gets back to where service is going on and everybody's COVID free, and the herd, um, the herd uh, immunization uh, um, has happened and um, everything is good, um, we're gonna be ahead. <laughs> we're gonna be far ahead. So just remember that entrepreneurs that are all on this call where some people see tragedy we as entrepreneurs have to see opportunity. Don't fold, don't tuck and hide, don't run, but stay, just stay a while. Have your moment of depression, but then keep your eyes open for the prize because it's there. Wow, that, 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 was, that was a sermon. Um, I'm, I'm Baptist, so I kind of wanted to give you some co a collection after that. <laughs> oh, amen. Um, I wrote I wrote that down where some people see tragedy, you know, you have to see the opportunity. Um, and and as you said, as entrepreneurs, that's that's what we what we have to do. That's where that passion comes in. Um, you know, when you're in this and you're doing this for the right reason, um, you're going to constantly drive to to make sure that we're able to fulfill what we need to fulfill. Um, and so even in the midst of a pandemic, we'll we'll be able to continue to do that and process. As you say you're going to have your setbacks and, and that's that's normal, but it's how do you um, find that opportunity in it and, and overcome. I see we have a question in from um, Andrea, so I'm going to uh, chime Andrea in. And uh, Andrea, give me a second. Mm -hmm. I'm going to unmute you so that, oh, you're unmuted. I'm, so you I, I, I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lana, I'm so proud to see you. Oh, thank you so much. You're Thank a wonderful you. entrepreneur. I'm glad that I was your lead faculty and came yeah. out with that. Yes, you were. <laughs> so, <clears throat> one thing that I'm observing, Lana, in the market is that all doctors went online too. You know, so today we have appointments online. 
But what I feel is that they are not all connected. So they tell me sometimes, like, I'm going to send you a list of medications. I'm going to send to the pharmacy your prescription. And it's not happening. It's kind of, they have it online, but they are not connected efficiently to, to give us the service. So tell us what you did to be more efficient in this moment, you know? So with having to not only deal with COVID, so let's, let's be honest, we're all dealing with stuff at home too, right? So especially if you're a parent, I'm not a parent, um, not yet at least, um, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs who are. And so now you've got your kids at home, you've got to run your, manage your company online, you're, um, you're, you're faced with a, a lot, you got a lot on your plate. So I say all of that to say, the answer to that is automation. That's how you don't screw up. <laughs> it is. Um, because we depend so much on, um, and that's one of the things that I also learned in Goldman Sachs, is the, mo the more human error you can remove from the situation, the better. And automation does that. We are at an, a day and age where computers do almost everything we need them to. Yes, we all have to invest in it. Um, and yes, yeah, an investment, but sometimes um, if we're smart, the um, government, government might actually provide us with tax credits for the investments that we're making, um, depending on the actual industry that we're in. So, um, so I would say if, if, health, if health companies are smart and they want to make you guys as customers, not necessarily as um, a, an entrepreneur at this time, but as a customer, as a patient, happy, they have to go into automation. So to all of my healthcare um, folks that might be on the line or listening to this, look into automation. Automation really is key. Elon Musk invests so much time. Most of his time is invested in focusing on and studying automation because it really is the success in the future. That's great. And that was a great question, Andrea. Anyone else, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Don't just unmute yourself and, and chime in. Um, please raise your hand so that um, we can unmute you and make sure that we're not getting feedback from everyone being unmuted uh, at the same time. So Dr. Joseph Ford, um, question for you, another question for you, and, and this is a little bit off topic of opening your business after uh, or during COVID-19. You have some of the top music artists in the country, like Drake, that you work with. And I know that some people have been wondering that. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you were able to, to work with some of these top celebrities. So customer service is key. You do good to people and that comes right back around to you. Well, I had never met Drake or any of the folks that his team members before um, up in, until that point. Um, and they had never heard about me, small town, uh, New Orleans audiologist, <laughs> one of many. Um, so it just so happened that, uh, funny story, um, I've worked with uh, an urgent care um, uh, entrepreneur who owns an urgent care, um, and he, um, he used to play football, and his barber was the Drake's audio engineer's barber. So it was like, yeah, in Cleveland. <laughs> So it just so happened that um, I got a phone call from them. It's a very long story, but I'll make it real short. I uh, got a phone call from them. I didn't believe that was really little folks. I ain't even go lie to y'all. I, I was like, ain't no way, ain't no way Greg want me to do nothing. You know, I'm at work. I, yo, I, I, I had on my regular old scrubs, and I think I had on one of my little old little wigs. You know, I look. I, oh, I didn't know. You're giving us, you're giving it all. Okay, go ahead. Keep yeah, going. I'm giving it all. I, I was looking crazy that day. And it was so crazy because, like, we, uh, <laughs> I got the phone call and I just kind of followed the motion. They were like, hey, um, this, is, uh, this is Drake's team. And I, they found the Canadian, so I kind of believed them a little bit. And, uh, but I still didn't think that was going to really happen. And so he said, um, yeah, we would love if you would come up. We heard about you from Nat Dorsey, from uh, Bossy Urgent Care in New Orleans East. And, you know, they know us this way and they were telling me how they know each other and everything and they were like we would really love it if you would come and it was September 24, 2018 which is the day that he did his concert here. I was like okay that's fine what time y'all need me to come. Um, gathered all my belongings together. Still didn't believe that was actually going to happen but hey 
I was down for the cause. I was like, you know what, let's just go see what's going to happen. I'm always open to other opportunities. And um, we got there, and it really hit me when I saw the really, really tall bodyguard standing in there. And we entered through a way, uh, through an area, a passage in the back of the arena that I had never been to before. I didn't even know that exists. It was on Magnolia Street. And I was thinking, oh, Magnolia Street? I didn't, I didn't even know that was Magnolia Street over here, you know? And so, so yeah, so um, I, I did, I did uh, eat a mole in front of all of his team members, um, including himself. And um, the piece that he wears, the custom ear monitor that he wears, is one I created. Wow, that's a that's an awesome story. Um, th that that's pretty cool. Well, listen, I, I mean, you know, I do PR and marketing and stuff. So you know, when you talk to Drake next time, if he needs a PR company, I can. <laughs> I'll let him know all about you. But hey, it was yeah. crazy because, like, I, I didn't even expect to um, end up going to a concert that day. I knew he was coming, but I wasn't planning on You know, I was working. So it just goes to show you um, that you just set yourself up for success, no matter what you treat everybody the same. And uh, I will tell you, when COVID hit, they reached out to me to make sure I was okay. Wow, that's 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 awesome. Hey, listen, we have another question from uh, Mark Sar. Mark, I hope I said your your last name correctly. Um, I'm going to unmute you, Mark, uh, and let us know um, your business, if you're a business owner, um, and then state your question. Uh, yeah, uh, I am a business owner. My business is uh, m and M Divine Design. Uh, my, my question is, um, matter of fact, it's good, really good information, so, I, so, so uh, the, the information she's sharing is really good. The one question I had is on when she were talk when you were asking about the KPIs, and she used a program with Microsoft, um, some kind of a project or, or or a program. Could you explain a little bit more about what that is? And Go ahead, Doctor Ford. So, so Mark, you have a pen and paper near you. I'm going to give I you do. exactly what it is. Because that's what we do at Goldman Sachs. We give each other exactly what we need. And I'm going to give you exactly what we need. I'm so glad you asked the question. So um, the program is called Jot Form. It's J-O, I'm sorry, T-F-O-R-M dot com. I want you to go to jotform.com. J-O-T. Oh, J-O-T, okay. F-O-R-M dot com. And I, I'm sorry, Dr. Floor, let me, let me interject just for a second. Um, and Mark, as she's speaking, if you can just mute your microphone, um, I think we may be getting some feedback from other people. So just mute your mic. All right, go ahead, Dr. Floor. So Jack Farm actually has integration with other apps. So it can integrate to almost anything, really. I encourage you to check out some videos on the Jack Farm and then specifically Google platform.com videos and then google.com microsoft excel um integration i'm telling you mark automation is key the more you can automate and no matter what kind of business you have you can automate stuff in it so the more that you can automate the better that's great 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 oh, go ahead dr joe sorry about that sorry um also microsoft excel itself has other ways of integration um, and it also, um, our automation that you can really do, because we use a lot with G Suite. If you don't use G Suite, you're missing out big time. Um, so make sure that in your business you're using the G Suite, which has Google Docs, um, Google Hangout, um, Google Cal, Google Drive for you and your other employees to share documents. Um, you've got all kinds of tools that integrate. And we actually um, upgraded to uh, Executive Suite. So you can utilize um, Google in order to really uh, boost up your company as well. Also, don't be afraid to call them. Um, we actually have been having conversations all, like I told you guys, I, and I'm not lying, um, while everybody else was running away, we were right there. And guess what? We talked to Google software developers. We talked to Verizon who has partnered with us to help us with our um, teletherapy platform. We talked to LookFar, which is a software development company, um, about creating a program for us. We talked to um, a billing company that's created another software for us so we can integrate everything with Microsoft Excel. 
we talk to other screening platforms. We talk to a hearing screening company in South Africa that is currently that we are currently utilizing them right now for some of our hearing screenings online. So look, right now is the time to get on the phone. Google reached out to us. They saw we were using them so much during this time. They reached out to us and said, hey, how can we make this better for you? And these companies, they want to hear from us. Like we have so much power as small business owners. And I think that we limit ourselves so much because we think we're just a small man or woman, you know, but that's not true. We, we are so strong. And the, the more we speak out and up and ask for resources, the more resources you'll see that um, people will be very happy to provide them to us. So go ahead and Google um, jobform.com and, and look for uh, some uh, videos on there so you can kind of get, get started. It's very easy, very easy. And, and, what, was, and what was the suite? I, I lost, I, I, it didn't come across clear. What, 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 what was the suites that you were talking about? Sure, so it's called G Suite. And if oh, you have a Google email, you automatically already have G Suite. Agreed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great, great, great question. Um, let's see. Looks like Andrea has another question. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, I just want everybody that is participating to know that to see the raise hand, first you gotta go to the bottom of your screen and click on participate and in the chat. In the chat, you can also make notes. So remember to click in the bottom of the screen in participants and you're going to see a raise hand on your right side. So if you need to make a question, you can raise your hand. Just that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for that. Andrea is always, that's why she's lead faculty over there. She's always making sure that we're on point and we're getting uh, everything together. So thank you for that, Andrea. Um, Anybody, if you, again, if you have any other questions, uh, please chime in. Dr. Ford, before we wrap this up, um, uh, we want to be you know, mindful of everybody's time. Is there anything else that you want to share with us or anybody on the call about reopening their business during? Because I think sometimes people are forgetting that we are still in this pandemic, um, you know, with, with everything going on around the country. Um, you know, the, the media is not as focused as much on COVID-19 as they were when it first happened. Um, and so I think some people are forgetting that we are still in a pandemic. Um, and so there are a lot of businesses who are opening, but there are so many who are still hurting. Any advice you have for any business owner who's listening right now or who's on this call who said, listen, I, I, I just I still haven't been able to do it. I, I can't do it. And I'm still hurting. I need to open up and I need to open up soon. Well, honestly, I would like to know what businesses are even on the line. Can some people start speaking out and let me know what you guys do? And I'll tell you, I'll give you those, that information you need. I'm an open book. so. Great. Yeah. So, so uh, chime in. Let's see. We have a call from Carrie, a uh, uh, hand raised from Carrie. Uh, go ahead, Carrie. Good morning. Um, Lana, first of all, oh my gosh, your story is so inspiring. It, you're, and just your presence, you're alluding so much joy. And it's just made my morning. So thank you for that. Um, I am a partner at a full service marketing agency in town. And um, my partner has, uh, has empowered me to put together a plan for reopening. And that really scares me because I don't feel like there's a right answer, you know? Um, so I've made a suggestion about um, doing a volunteer reopening um, after the, the July holiday. But I still don't know if that's the right answer. I've been reviewing what the city has been releasing and what the state fire marshal has been releasing. But um, for a full service marketing agency, we have about 10 people, so we're boutique in size, um, and we're located in an office building in downtown New Orleans. There was a confirmed case on our floor. So I'm really hesitant, <laughs> really hesitant to force people to go back. So um, the first thing I'm going to say is I cannot provide you guys with any type of medical advice about COVID-19. I want to say that first. Okay, that's my disclaimer. Now, if you do something I said, then that's on you. Don't do it. Don't take, ask somebody. Trust but verify. So this is what I'm going to say now that I've gotten it out the way. Um, Carrie, first of all, thank you so much 
um, for your compliment. And I'm so glad that you asked that question. Um, my company is, we're seeing people in person now, but everybody's over there looking like Star Wars, I'll be honest. Um, we've got the mask, we've got the shield, um, we're being as clean as possible. You are in a unique position where your company um, seems like as a marketing company that you, you guys can operate virtually. Um, so you, I would say, um, I think that you need to redo, revise your, uh, like put together a strategic plan. Um, if you have the ability, the resources to have a limited staff right now, um, go ahead and try to put aside some funds for that very limited staff, whether it's yourself, whether it's your spouse, um, whether it's a, a trusted employee, but you guys need to put together some strategic plan to figure out what you're going to do next, whether you reopen or not. This is the time, I'm telling you, Carrie, this is the time to really take advantage of because everybody's hoping that people like you and companies like you knock on their doors right now, just like you're hoping or, or you wouldn't mind if customers were coming for you. So put together a strategic plan. What's in your strategic plan? How much money do you need for just 30 days of drafting a plan? Um, how many employees would you need? Can you do that yourself? And can you do that at home? Do you have a Google email? Can you make one? Can you make one for every single one of your employees? And you guys do telechat, virtual um, conferences. We do it all day long. I've never spent so, that's why I look so good right now. Because I've been doing so much stuff virtually. <laughs> so I have no choice but to look good, right? Um, so, so yeah, you guys, like, um, like I'm telling Carrie, it's the truth. You need to put together a strategic plan for this because you don't know if this is going to happen again. Carrie, if COVID happens again, are you going to shut down your company? No. And to be honest, we, we haven't had to, we have had the luxury of being able to work remotely. So it, it's, I'm in a tough position because I feel like my business partner wants everyone to get back in the office because as I'm sure Brandon can speak to being in marketing, you know, it's all about those uh, collaboration and face-to-face -face interactions. And you can kind of feed off of that when you're in person. But when it's remotely, it, it creates a whole different set of challenges. And so I'm struggling with, I think my business partner wants us all to be back in the office. I mean, we are paying rent monthly. So it kind of feels like that's going to waste. Um, but then on the other hand, I'm kind of thinking, you know, we have team members with kids. We have team members that are immunocompromised. You know, I'm kind of thinking if this is working, if we can all continue business as usual working remotely, why would we force everyone to go back to the office? And so that's why I'm kind of taking the approach of it's voluntary. If you want to go back to the office, you can. But then as business owners and partners, there's a lot that we need to do to prepare the office for that. So hand sanitize, sanitize it. All, all of that. So, What's in your strategic plan? That's what I'd like to know, because at this point, you should have one. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do today. Don't just, when, when you have issues like this or hurricanes, because y'all know that's coming through, right? Um, you need to have a strategic plan for each thing, each tragedy that could happen. You need to have a fire strategic plan. You need to have a COVID strategic plan. You need to have a hurricane as bad as Katrina Category 5 type of plan, you guys need to set plans in place for all of this. And if you haven't, you need to do that today. You need to start today. Um, because the truth is, we don't know if COVID's going to happen again. And you cannot, I love what you said, Carrie. You said, no, I'm, I'm not closing my company. No, indeed. You, you damn right. Don't close your company. Um, there are ways that you can. If you can do the work virtually, you've got to do the work virtually. Don't allow your fun, like, you got to put together a strategic plan. You have to make a business plan for this. And if you haven't yet, you're behind. So go ahead and get on that. Yeah, and I, I would just chime in, um, Carrie. Um, everything that, that Dr. Joseph Ford said, I, I applaud and having that plan, but also understanding, too, in that plan for all of your plans, your, you, your family, your employees, and their health comes first. Um, you know, if you if you think that you may go back and it's risk putting your employees at risk, what happens if, you know, all of your employees, God forbid, gets the coronavirus? Well, then now your business can't operate even virtually as it would 
because, you know, you put your employees in, at risk and in jeopardy. So, you know, you have to figure out what's best in every, every situation is different. But if it's working virtually, it's working virtually for us. I tell you, we, I have not been back to the studio and, and I'm not, we, we talked about doing it because as, as you said, I mean, you know, especially in marketing and communication, we use our, our Basecamp software, but it's nothing like being together in person. We have Zoom meetings and Zoom calls, but it's still nothing like being together in person and working for our clients on their behalf in person with our team members. But at the same time, we have to look and make sure that, you know, we're doing the best that we can. Now, I'll tell you, I'm, it seems like I'm in more meetings than, than ever before um, doing Zoom because you got to work a little bit harder. But if that's what we have to do, then, you know, that's, that's what we have to do. But make, make, still making a way. Andrea um, has another question. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, you know, I can't hold myself. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think is interesting in this discussion is that they all talk about new normal, new normal, right? And I think this online transactions, this online relationship with customers came to stay. So even if you're going back to the office, you are going in limited capacity at this point. I think Carrie is doing a great job asking employees to voluntarily say if they want to go or others that feel themselves at risk, they should keep on working online. And I think when you say it came to stay, like I think these online platforms, online ways of relating to the market should keep running anyway. Even if you go back to the office, you know, you try to see what you can keep online. We are working just online as a team at 10KSB. We were never so much together to make decisions. It actually made us closer than really, you know, when we are face to face. So I think it's a challenge, but everybody needs to go in this direction, right, Lana? Keep your internet, your online resources on because we don't know what can come. So maybe it's a time just to move to the office a little bit, but keep it running, you know, online. What do you think, Lana? And I can give an example of that. So COVID actually... She's mute, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. I don't know why it muted on its own. Um, <laughs> was Miranda. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, you the mic through. I didn't know that. Um, I gotcha. So um, we actually were able to, because of the um, COVID, we were able to introduce a brand new, um, a brand new uh, um, service. So now we have in-person visits in the clinic. So we call it in-clinic visits. We have, which is our COVID-19 precautions. We've got the mask. We've got the shield. We've got the scrub. You know, we're full Star Wars over there. Um, then we have um, our second, which is our, um, we call it our on-site or mobile services. So we have mobile services now. Prior to COVID, that was all we had. We had two things, mobile and in clinic. Now we have a third, which is called remote services. So now we have continued carry to see patients virtually. Now our patients have three different options. They can see us remotely, they can see us in person, or they can see us, we can come mobily to their site. So that has only increased our revenue now. So now our company hasn't, we haven't gone under. We made a profit last month, we made a profit month before. Um, ever since we in, instilled COVID, and our expectation is that our profits will only increase as more, more um, schools in Louisiana start to lay down procedures and plans and put plans in place for returning back. They're not going to want vendors like us in the, in the schools. So now, keep this out. Now, with our teletherapy or our remote services, we have reduced costs because I don't have to bring a team of 10 people anymore to make sure the kids are coming in and out. So now we're saving money and costs. We're saving money. I was going to um, end up having a satellite office because the brick and mortar is like the business uh, model for audiologists and speech professionals. Now I don't have to worry about that. So I save on that as well. Um, I save on other things that are unseen, like energy bill, lights, um, gas, whatever else we need in order to operate supplies, materials. And also it reduces our liability because 
the nurse is pretty much the one who's taking care of everything at the school. So, so yeah, you, you've just created a new model. Um, offer it to you, your, your customers, see what they think. Great, great, great questions. Um, before we before we wrap this up, I'm going to encourage anyone else that has any questions, uh, please chime in now. Um, meanwhile, Dr. Um, Joseph Lena Ford, tell us um, where we can, if anyone wants to reach out to you, um, if they're in need of your services, um, or just want to reach out to you and, and, and you know ask you a question, how can they reach you? So um, I definitely want you guys, if you're into social media, please follow me on social media because that's another place where I do a lot of gym dropping um, because I want people to know this information. I've had a lot of success over my four years and God did not bless me with this success to keep it all to myself. It's meant for you. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. J, the hearing doc, D-R-J-H-E-A-R-I-N-G-D-O-C. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook, Dr. Lena Joseph Ford. Um, and I also have a website. It's um, drlenajosephford.com. And that website links every single thing. It links um, high-level hearing. It links um, the articles I've been featured in, any blog posts that I put up, as well as social media. So if you go to drlenajosephford.com, you'll be able to get access to me, including my email address. Um, and also, um, if you guys don't mind, um, so I do have, like Brandon mentioned, I have a show um, on uh, WWL TV Channel 4 that airs every Friday on Great Day Louisiana called Healthy Habits. Um, I'm currently looking for uh, people to be guests on my show, and I, I don't know who's in the health sector or who might have a story to tell about health care or a health-related story, but um, I would like to offer the opportunity to any of my fellow Goldman Sachs colleagues um, that are listening right now, just shoot me an email. Um, you can go on my website, drlanajosephford.com to find my information to contact me. Shoot me an email and let me know that you guys were participants in the segment today um, and in the resource call, and I will go ahead and give you guys a free um, free opportunity to be online. I'm, I'm sorry, on the news. Look at that. See, you join into a Goldman Sachs alumni resource call and, and you have an opportunity to be on TV with Dr. Lena Joseph Ford. Listen, you, you are, you're an amazing person. Um, what you have accomplished in your business in, in four years um, is amazing. There are people who've been in business much longer who have not accomplished what you've accomplished. So there is obviously something that you're doing right. As you said, besides the blessings that you have received from God, um, he can bless us, but then you have to be able to take those blessings and run with it, right? Faith without works is dead. And, and you've obviously done the work. So, more power to you and we continue to to wish you well and um as we continue to follow you you you're you're amazing um listen follow dr lana joseph ford uh for those of you who are um, on this resource call and you have not joined the goldman sachs program um you have it's great that that you have been allowed to be on this call because these are the type of uh this is the type of information that we get uh, while in the program and then as alums the the uh, education continues for us as alumni and that's one of the great things that Goldman Sachs does especially I mean listen we got to give a shout out to this chapter at Delgado um, and you know David and Andrea and Patrice and Sheila and and the entire team everybody and I'm sorry I started calling names because I can't call everybody I shouldn't have called anybody but the entire team at Goldman Sachs um, down here, um, we, we appreciate everything that you do, that you've done, that you continue to do for us and continue to hold us accountable as business owners and giving us the information that we need. Um, so go follow Dr. Uh, Lena Joseph Ford, follow Goldman Sachs, um, and then go and follow me as well, right? Um, you can reach me uh, on social media. My social media handle is my first name and my last name, Brandon. Armand, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-A-R-M-A-N-T. And for my social media, um, you can get to my company, BAM Communications, um, uh, or you can also go and uh, follow my show. It's called The Blueprint. Um, and you can listen to it on all streaming platforms or you can find podcasts 
or on WTDN Talk That NOLA I Radio. Actually, Dr. Joseph Ford was uh, one of the guests on one of our shows that we have on our Talk That NOLA platform uh, with Casey Ferran, and that's when I learned so much about you. And I said, this woman is amazing. And now I get the chance to interview you um, as well. So thank you to Goldman Sachs for that opportunity. Uh, with that being said, before we wrap up um, and we toss it back to Sheila, is there anything else that you want to, uh, any other gems that you want to drop on us, Dr. Ford, or do we have to go to your social media? Video? You definitely should visit my social media pages because like I said, I drop them daily, but I'll just say, just to reiterate, um, two things. Number one, where some people see tragedy, other people see opportunities as entrepreneurs, we should see opportunity. Number two, automation is key. If you want to go ahead and you want to have a good, successful business with good KPIs set in place, get automated. All right, great. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Lena Joseph Ford, and I am Brandon Armand. Thank you for joining us for this uh, resource call. I'm going to hand it back to Sheila with Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses. Sheila. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon and Dr. Joseph, Brandon Armand, y'all both were fantastic. I wish you could, Brandon, come every week and facilitate our calls. It was fantastic. And Dr. Joseph Ford, who was one of my first recruits, my first class coming into this program and just watching you soar is amazing. I'm so inspired by that. Um, just want to thank everybody for joining us on this call. Uh, as Brandon said, uh, we uh, the, the Goldman Sachs program, is a uh, wonderful program to help you with your growth plan. I think they will attest to that. So we're looking forward to uh, actually having some of you folks on the call as scholars as well. But once again, I just want to thank Dr. Ford and Brandon for a wonderful call. And I'll see you guys soon. A BAM Network production.